Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to feel better, sleep better, have less inflammation and less stress in your life, then do we have the Earthing Show for you. Today I'll be talking with Clint Ober, a revolutionary pioneer in the field of earthing and grounding, the co-author of a brilliant book on health called Earthing, and featured in a brilliant new documentary called The Earthing Movie. And that's just what I want to talk with him about today, about reconnecting to the earth and your natural state of being for greater health, better sleep, reduced inflammation, and less stress, not to mention for the health of your kids. That plus we'll talk about preemie studies, metal duct tape, white Nike shoes, Deepak Chopra, and what in the world a quarter million dollars of art and a commode have to do with anything. So <laughs> welcome, gotcha. Welcome to the show, Clint. Are you ready to shine? Yes, Michael. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here, and uh, yeah, I'm ready to give it, a, give it, a, give it our best. Woohoo! All right, and I am plugged in. I am connected to the Earth, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But my keyboard for all 1,200 plus interviews has been connected to the ground. Before we dive right into things, though. I want to start with a powerful study that blew me away. What okay. happened when they plugged premature infants into the electrical field of the earth? Well, it normalized vagal tone. Um, and that's a measure of your, the balance of your autonomic nervous system and your heart rate variability. And uh, so the babies before, you know, especially preemies, they get a lot of the colics and a lot of the you know, stress, stress. I mean, they're stressed. I mean, they're in a fight or flight state. They've been taken away from their mom and, and they're sitting there in an incubator. So they're really stressed. So as soon as we put the patch on them mm -hmm. and grounded them to the earth, uh, within less than a minute, I mean, we started to normalize the vagal town. And so what that did was calm the, calm the autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic comes up, quiets everything down. And then they, it just normalizes the uh, vagal tone, meaning the balance of the autonomic nervous system. And then they calm down. They're not stressed. They don't have that anxiety and that irritability and that, you know, that trauma. So it, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, I think they did, I forget the number of like 28 babies over a period of time. Yeah. And they were all premature. And the number one problem they have is the colics and all of the health related uh, health issues related to um, you know the fighter being in that fight or flight state and and I've got to imagine it gives them a better chance to live if they're able to calm down relax if they're not you know hyper breathing is the best way that I can put it hyperventilating more or less yes. because they're yes. in that fight or flight response yes yeah it's re rather remarkable I mean it's kind of like I could go on about that subject for quite a bit, but it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the people that I have over the years when I've grounded, especially a lot of the ladies with uh, MS, lupus, and, and health disorders of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> one time I started, you know, asking, I said, you know, what, what happened in your life prior to this manifesting? You know, like you didn't have MS when you were born, you know, what happened? And over a period of time, I, I kept hearing these stories like, you know, a great loss. I lost my parent. I lost my job. I lost my house. I lost a child. I lost a relationship, whatever it was. And <clears throat> so they ended up being uh, in a uh, elevated sympathetic state mm -hmm. and like cortisol, like fight or flight in the fight or flight state of it. And they never, they weren't able to get out of it. So what happens is when you're in that state, you release a lot of cortisol which keeps you keeps the state elevated, and then <clears throat> as time goes on, uh, it, you know the cortisol will create inflammation. The inflammation will create uh, anxiety, irritability, pain, and then that creates more stress. So it's a vicious cycle. So they end up remaining in this chronically elevated sympathetic state. And so what I try to do is I I go back and I tell this story <laughs> that. Uh, uh, when I was young, I used to live in a ranch up in Montana, and in some summers we would have, you know, just, you know, a, an explosion of jackrabbits. 
And so it was always interesting. At that jump in front of your car, if I might add, Clint, I couldn't avoid them up in your neck of the woods. (laughs) I know. It's crazy. And um, but anyhow, so there's also a lot of coyotes. So the rabbits are always sitting there eating the grass just like they normally do. That's what they do. And the coyotes are always sneaking up on them, you know, trying because their their lunch is the rabbit. And so, but generally what happens is the coyote's sneaking up and the rabbit is sitting there and just, you know, eating grass like normal. And the coyote jumps, the rabbit springs, you know, and, and then he'll zigzag back and forth across the pasture. Coyote will try to catch him. Ninety, The majority of the time, the coyote runs out of energy and the rabbit runs just a little bit further and he sits there and he'll be shaken like a leaf. And then all of a sudden he'll have this one great big shake and release. Mm-hmm. And then he goes back to eating grass like nothing ever happened. And so it's the fight or flight. That's the way the fight or flight works. But today, we as humans, we live in this um, in this world where, where we have, we're always in a, a constant state of fight or flight because the phone, the, you know, going to the mailbox, uh, going to work, traffic, you know, the kids, everything goes on. So our every time we, I mean, our sympathetic response to everything that goes on in our environment, everything in our lives. And if you don't ground out the effects of that, and that's what happens with the rabbit. I mean, the rabbit, they, you grounded out that excess cortisol stress, and then everything has went back to normal. But if you stay in that chronic state for too long, then that's what causes, underlies the you know, the, the a lot of the autoimmune diseases, it's what promotes the inflammation that ends up promoting a lot of the uh, autoimmune health disorders. I don't know if that made sense, but it's... It, it does. And I, I want to dive into a lot of the science behind it. First off, you got me thinking about a recent guest that we had on the show, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, James Gordon, I believe it was, who was talking uh-huh. about trauma. And one of the techniques you can use to start to move past PTSD is literally a shaking exercise to shake or release off that energy, which is what you're doing by grounding into the earth. But then you also, you share a story in the documentary that's fascinating about a girl who had scarlet fever. Yes. And what the elders did with her. Well, yeah, when I was quite young, I spent a lot of, a lot of my I lived out in the, in the very rural area, so my best friends growing up were Native American, some of them. And I remember one uh, night going home after school, and uh, one of the uh, one of my friend's sister had scarlet fever. We didn't really know what it was. It was just a mysterious disease. But, you know, they'd taken her to the doctors, done a lot of things, but she kept getting sicker and sicker. So finally, one of the I came home one night, and there they were digging a pit in the ground. Uh, kind of a sandy soil pit and they put a little bit of straw in it and they laid the girl in it and they lit a fire and they just sat there with her the one of the i think i call them one of the elders and uh, they just sat there with him and i don't remember how many days this went but it went on for a few days and then all of a sudden one day she got up and she was out running around looked normal and healthy and everything seemed to be fine and so I relate that back to you know, if you ever watch the animals, you know, like the dogs, cats, they get sick or they get injured. They'll go dig up a little ground, you know, the soil up and lay in the ground until they heal up. I've got goosebumps. My dog, Pumpkin, my uh, coyote mix, was with me for 17 years. She she struggled with cancer on and off for, for 10 years of her life. But when when it was finally overtaking her, she could not settle down in the house. She was so uncomfortable. We would take her and put her on the grass, and she yes. would have a smile on her face. And in fact, for the last 48 hours of her life, we right. did not leave that grass or by her side. And right. it helped her feel so, you could literally, pan, uh, 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 freaked out, panicked, in pain in the house, on the grass, chill, relax. Let's talk about what is earthing. Well, so basically what grounding is, earthing is all about is the earth itself is, I hate to use technical terms, but I have to, but it's negatively charged. And the word negative means like if you, if you take a look at a battery, 
you have a positive end and a negative end. The positive end, there are no electrons. The negative end, there's an excess of electrons. And so you put a light in between and you turn a switch on and the electrons will travel from the negative side to the positive side until they're all used up, then the battery's dead. So the earth itself is negatively charged. It's about you know 20 to 50 millivolts negative. So that means on the surface of the earth, there's an abundance of free electrons and they're, they're free, they can move. If you've seen lightning, you've seen electrons being able to move and reduce um, charge in the clouds. Uh, everything electrical in the world, all of our electrical grids, all of our, many of our home appliances and everything, they're all grounded to the earth. And so what they're doing is they're, when you connect something to the earth, then it equalizes with the earth. So if you take your computer and plug it in and it's grounded, then the chassis of the computer will be, have a negative surface charge on the, on the chassis of the computer. It'll be minus 20 to 50 millivolts. Now, when you were you were in the cable industry for a long time, in fact, uh, largely responsible, if I understand right, for cable routers, um, which is a whole other story to itself. But you realized, you found very quickly, if the cables weren't grounded, plugged into Earth, the signal right. was, in technical terms, all messed up. Yeah, you had a, no, what you have is noise. You have a lot of noise, and a lot of it just becomes be because of the system is an aerial system meaning in the wind, and you have all of the atmospheric um, uh, static, you know, the wind blowing creates static electricity, the dust, everything that's going on out there that creates a lot of noise. And then you have lightning. And so you have to ground everything so that it maintains the electrical potential of the earth or the surface of the earth. So that reduces all this noise and this charge and dampens everything so that you have a good signal, good clean signal. And um, that's kind of how I related it to the body in the early days that, you know, the cable, body's kind of like a cable system inside. You know, it has uh, nerves running everywhere and it has a myelon sheath, which is uh, a dielectric, meaning it doesn't conduct anything and it shields the nerves and, and, and it goes on and on. But, um, but the main thing is to maintain electrical stability, to maintain a clean sound, a clean picture, clean data, and so on. And, and there's, a, there's a book from the 80s, and I'm forgetting the author right now. It's one of the most brilliant books I've read called The Body Electric. Yes, uh, uh, Becker. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. we are, I mean, people think, well, I'm not electrical, but we'll go into the doctor and have an EKG or an EEG or, or anything with a G in it, and what you're going to find or a brain scan yes. is that we're an electrical system, aren't we? Yes, every cell in the body is functions electrically. Uh, in order for it to take nutrition in and take whatever out, it, the the cell has to uh, depolarize and repolarize. Meaning, you have a negative charge on the outside or the inside, and you have <clears throat> uh, one of them is like fifteen millivolts, one of them is seventy five millivolts, and every time those discharge, they pump. Uh, you know nutrition, whatever, in and out of the cell. So that's an electrical phenomena. And that's kind of how I, how everything came about all, all the way around, because eventually, you know, once what I learned was that it was quite by accident that when you ground the body, then if you have any pain or inflammation in your body, and back then the word inflammation was not really in the language, but if you have pain in the body, then the pain goes away. And <clears throat> Uh, it's kind of like, well, how does that happen? I mean, and nobody knew. I didn't know. I, I searched, did a lot of search in the medical industry, medical libraries. Nothing. You talk to docs. Nobody could get their head around what I was talking about. But when, when I, um, <clears throat> so I, what I did know for sure is whether it's an animal, a plant, or a human, when you touch the earth, mm -hmm. when you are connected to the earth, your body's going to be at 20 millivolts negative. And what that means to me in, in the early days, you know, common sense, cowboy logic, you can't have charge in a grounded object. You can't have charge in a grounded body. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what, I didn't know how the, implement, how the immune system worked or how the body worked in the beginning. I just knew that if you had pain, yeah. the pain would go away. Let, let me pause you for a second. I want to dive into inflammation, but I want to talk about the soup that we're swimming in. I joked in the beginning about white Nikes. And, yeah. and we are swimming in an electromagnetic field, aren't we? 
Yes. Yeah, the, if you are not grounded, you know, like an animal or a tree would be grounded if they're outdoors sitting on the earth. Okay, if you are not grounded, and, and you've noticed that trees will grow into power lines, it doesn't hurt them at all, all these kind of things. Uh, so, but if you are not grounded, you are an antenna. That means your body attracts, you know, like the low frequency 60 hertz EMFs and all that kind of electrical noise that's in your environment. And it can perturb, you know, molecules, electrons in your body, especially water molecules, and um, create. You know, what I like to say is like, in, you know, I go back to Montana in the in the woods. Uh, in the when we were young, we used to go hunting or we'd be outdoors a lot, and you could always feel if there was a bear in the woods. Oh cause yeah, because your, your hair would stand straight up. You couldn't hear the bear. You couldn't smell him. You couldn't see him, but you knew he was there because your hair would stand straight up. Where that comes from, I mean, the bear has an energy field. You have an energy field. And throughout eons of time, that signaling has, is built into us. And today, we have so much noise in, in our environments. So now our, 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 that very elementary primal sensing system is kind of overridden by all the noise that's in our environment because in emf every animal every plant everything has an emf emits its own electromagnetic fields and frequencies and <clears throat> so when you are grounded to the earth then your body is equal to the earth and you have um, the, the, the earth will actually push the, pushes these electron i mean pushes these fields away from you but when you are not grounded then your body they try to the fields try to pull your the electrons in your body into compliance with the you know the energy source and it's kind of too, too technical to get into but the um <clears throat> if you are ungrounded and and let's say you hear a car go by or you hear noise, whatever. So your sympathetic nervous system is going to respond to everything in your environment, no matter what it is, whether it's noise, wind, uh, you know, heat, cold, um, somebody drops a fork, somebody, you know, any kind of anything goes on, your sympathetic nervous system is going to fire. I mean, it's going to respond. Yeah. It's part of the fight or flight. On the other hand, you have your parasympathetic, which operates pretty much with hormones. So every time, and what it tries to do is release enough hormones to calm you down just enough so you can think. So you have a few split seconds to make a decision. Do I run or do I fight? And, and, and that's all good. The problem is, is we live in a chronically elevated sympathetic state because of all this noise, this electrical noise. Mm -hmm. All noise is electrical, whether it's sound, heat, cold. It's all, in a sense, electrical. So... <clears throat> When you are not grounded, then you have a thousand bears. <laughs> you know, attack, I mean, or a thousand coyotes after you. Yeah. And so, but the parasympathetic is sitting here pumping hormones, and then all of a sudden, eventually, you suffer what is called adrenal fatigue mm -hmm. because the sympathetic keeps working, keeps running, but the parasympathetic is running out of resources yeah. to dampen the effect of the. Uh, sympathetic response and so then eventually the cortisol you know creates not now that it can create more pain because you've lost your ability to modulate or you know to dampen that uh, sympathetic response so then <clears throat> now the sympathetic is running wild and so it's over you know it's over responding and it's a lot of people who have like fibromyalgia it's kind of related to that because now they have phantom pain it's running all over the place and they don't know exactly what it is sometimes and um <clears throat> but they're super sensitive to everything touch sound everything cold temperature everything and electric fields for sure and <clears throat> so um you have to get grounded in order to prevent, I mean, to protect yourselves from these frequencies. A lot of these frequencies you can't really protect yourself from because they're too high frequency. But you can't, um, there's, you know, we, we, we created an artificial environment that we're living in. And then we've 
uh, energized it with all of these electric fields and all this and unnatural noise and our nervous systems, everybody's nervous systems is just like this. So the only thing you can do is put your feet on the ground and, and ground it out. It's, it's making me concerned, particularly concerned, and, and we'll shift topics from here, but it's making me very concerned of this, this uh, new generation of cell phones that are uh -huh. coming out with such a high power and close proximity. And what that will do, I think that's an, an I'm not sure that, that grounding will be the entire answer, but I think we're going to need to spend a lot more time plugged in and as close to Earth as we can. Let's, right. let's switch gears from here and, and let's talk about inflammation. And what happened when you first introduced this concept to Dr. Stephen Sinatra? Well, I, I had been working on it for a couple of years and I'd actually done a couple of studies. And what we learned was that, uh, first of all, we, the first study was more anecdotal. So we learned that if you ground a person and have them sleep grounded for a period of time, all kinds of uh, uh, benefits started showing up, like TMJ improved, mm -hmm. PMS improved, just, uh, you know, pain went down, sleep improved, and so on. Uh, but the second study we did was to measure cortisol. So that's why I know a little bit about cortisol. And... Um, uh, so we, we saw before everybody's cortisol, we would measure the cortisol every four hours for 24 hours and then put all the profiles together. And, and so everybody's cortisol looks, looked like spaghetti uh, in the, in the 24 hour circadian profile. And so then after a month or six weeks of uh, grounding, then everybody's cortisol synchronized. They were all had, they all came up appropriately at 4 AM uh, up to about 6, 8 AM. And then it drifted down throughout the normal cycles throughout the day. And then at night, it was the lowest. And there we learned that if the, there's only one reason you can't on this planet, you can't sleep because your cortisol is out of whack. Because sleep is autonomic. Sleep is natural. It's like breathing. It's going to happen unless you're in a fight or flight state. Unless something's on your mind, something's eating at you, something's disturbing you, and you're responding to it. Yes, even though it's subtle, you know, subtle sometimes. Um, <clears throat> you have to keep me on track here when I get off on some of these tangents. So, so we're going for sleep, and then we'll go into inflammation. But the sleep is fascinating, and it's important for people. And I know yeah. personally how much better it is if I sleep grounded. It changes everything. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the sleep is, you know, what the number one reason people can't sleep is, I mean, their cortisol is disturbed, but the cortisol creates inflammation and pain. But if you reduce the inflammation and pain, then people can sleep. <laughs> so it's well, kind of... You brought it back well. So what, what exactly is inflammation and what was Dr. Steven Sinatra telling you about this? Okay. The inflammation was really, it was really interesting because when I first found out, uh, they had done the studies, we were, we I had been talking to a lot of doctors. Nobody really understood it. Uh, they didn't understand anything electrical. All they understood was, uh, you know, chemical and so on. So anyhow, we sat down with Stephen, who was a cardiologist, and he understood the body from an electrical point of view because the heart's electrical. Everything is the brain. Everything is connected. And so we explained everything, and we told Stephen that, you know, when we ground anybody, it doesn't matter. The, uh, the pain will, their pain will diminish in just a very short period of time. And he says, well, Clint, he says, you should be looking at inflammation rather than pain because inflammation is, you can't have pain unless you have inflammation. And so I went to look at inflammation and nobody knew what inflammation was back then, except that you had uh, like a sprained ankle. It would swell up and balloon up, turn red and be uh, heat and uh, pain. So that was inflammation. And then you had the, um, the inflammation cascade, you know, like if you have an injury, then you'll have the cascade where the immune system will uh, send in a bunch of white blood cells mm -hmm. and it'll release radicals uh, that will burn up any pathogens or any cells. And then that's the end of the cascade and life goes on. And so it wasn't until I started researching inflammation and back in 2002, whenever it was there, Nobody had discussed the word. Nobody used the word inflammation. It was only in some textbooks and uh, some studies and very current literature. And so you couldn't use the word inflammation to the public because they didn't know what it was. You couldn't even use the word to, uh, to the docs because they say, well, you're nuts, you know, because 
that isn't how that isn't how inflammation works. So anyhow, as I started studying inflammation, I learned that the neutrophils, like if you have a damaged cell, which everybody does, you have aging cells that have to be disposed of daily, uh, or if you have a damaged cell, or if you have a pathogen in your body, oftentimes the, especially from an injury or, or something of that nature, the immune system will send over a white blood cell, and it will literally encapsulate that damaged cell mm -hmm. or the pathogen and release reactive oxygen species. These are electrically charged molecules. Yeah. They are short. They have an electron imbalance. And so what happens... By design. Yeah. So what happens is these radicals will rip electrons from the shell of the pathogen or the damaged cell and destroy it. That's how the immune system works. But as soon as I heard the word, you know, reactive oxygen or reactive, I knew that, well, this is electrical because that's, that's meaning there's an, this is an electrical event. So then I looked at the immune system from that point on as being electrical, meaning that the, it's an electronic phenomena. So if you now then started pasting it together, so started looking at, okay, well, people have inflammation and a lot of people have, uh, you know, what do we call them? The, the degenerative health disorders or the autoimmune. Mm -hmm. And so the immune system is dysfunctioning. And I happened to have a few subjects who had lupus at the time. And lupus is where, you know, the word lupus means wolf uh, in German. And so it means that, you know, the, you know, wolf will chew its leg off to save its life. So what you have here is the immune system uh, destroying a liver or destroying uh, the myelin sheath or destroying platelets or something in the body. And so it's attacking, the body is attacking itself. That's, that's how that word comes up. And so in looking at it, then I started to understand that, okay, here's an immune cell that's oxidizing a pathogen or a damaged cell. And when we ground the body, what are we doing? There's only one thing we could possibly be doing. We're flooding it with free electrons. So what happens is then you have to use cowboy logic. You know, it's the shoes because when in 19, you know, we've had rubber shoes for a hundred years, but when in 1960s, when we invented the simple plastics and that's when we started making all of their rounded carpets and started putting plastic soles on the, on our shoes and especially the athletic shoes. And so I just, this came to me. I didn't, I'm not smart enough to figure this out. It just intuitively came through that okay so if if the body is if we're pouring electrons into the body it's like pouring water onto a fire because it's the same process and so now what's happening is these you have a pathogen or you have damaged cell and again the neutrophil comes over there and, re, and reduces the radical and then if there's any excess radicals left over from that response that immune response then they're going they're only going to last three or four 20 nanoseconds at most. And they're going to latch on to an electron from somewhere, steal an electron, so it neutralizes itself because it's electrically charged. Yeah. And so it's just looking to neutralize. So it reaches over and grabs a cell from a healthy, uh, uh, you know, uh, an electron from a healthy cell. Yeah. And that damages that cell. And so now the immune system sends another electron, I mean, another neutrophil over, cleans up that mess. And so it's, it's ongoing collateral damage. It's like a log on fire. It's a slow burning fire. And so that's when I was able to put together. So it doesn't matter what's wrong. As long as you have, if you have inflammation, all we have to do is put a patch on or ground you, take your shoes off your hands, put your feet and your hands on the earth and keep you there for 20, 30 minutes and your pain will come way down. Then the healing of the damage that has been done by the ongoing oxidation that may take time to repair and for you to fully recover. But that hot burning pain stops and then the healing process can kick in. So that's how we made the connection between that humans accidentally disconnected from the earth and we lost our natural ground because when the body is grounded, when it's at earth potential, it's negative. You cannot have inflammation in a negative environment. I love it. And, and a last note on this, and then we're going to switch gears, is, is uh, I call it sticky blood. 
what's going on in our blood that's creating cardiovascular disease, that's creating high blood pressure, which has to do with inflammation as well. Yeah. Well, this, this, this was really, again, with uh, Dr. Sinatra and, and Dr. Chevalier, uh, everybody, you know, we, nobody could really understand how the electrons from the earth got into the body and how they went and put out the fire of, of inflammation. To me, uh, I just know that kind of electrons take the path of least resistance to a charge. And, and that's simple, you know, math. But so in the body, you have a lot of inflammation. If you have any inflammation, you have a lot of inflammation. Uh, it may be subtle and it's, it may be more concentrated in one area. That's where you're going to feel the pain. But so anyhow, what happened, what we learned was uh, we, were af we, were, we were forever looking. So what's the mechanism of action that allows these electrons to get to the site of inflammation and reduce the charge? So <clears throat> Stephen, being a cardiologist, and we knew that as soon as you ground somebody, 15, 20 minutes later, the color comes up, the skin color comes up. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so then we knew that the blood was involved. So we started looking at blood before and after grounding. Our first little test, we saw that before everybody's blood was kind of in a rouleau formation, thick and sticky, yeah. and kind of like uh, popcorn and so on. So it stick together in static electricity. And everybody's blood was a little different, but it always had some kind of rouleau formation. And so we took a group of, I think, a dozen cardiologists yep. back in Essex, Connecticut. Stephen was, they were all Stephen's friends. And so we drew blood from each one of them, looked at them under a dark field or a white field. And then uh, we grounded them for 30 to 40 minutes each, and then drew the blood again. And before, their blood was all kind of, Colluged up, they can stick in. Afterwards, everybody's blood separated and looked perfectly smooth. The red blood cells were all easy to see, and uh, and and so they were more fluid. There were you know, we reduced the viscosity, and um, <clears throat> so then uh, then we did a second study, and we wanted to figure out what exactly was happening to the blood cells. So we measured the electrical surface charge on red blood cells. Yeah. Before, it may have been, um, you know, negative, maybe. It has to be negative, otherwise it's glue. It'll bond. It'll, it'll electroplate. I mean, it'll stick together. So, but the body had, uh, you know, the average person had like five, Was the body was like, the red blood cells were like five millivolts negative. As soon as we ground them, they went to 15 to 20, and then wow. the blood all separated. So what happened was the, the more you increase the surface charge on red blood cells, mm -hmm. Then like little magnets, you, little negative magnets, you put them, push them together and they'll push each other apart. So red blood cells cannot stick together when you're grounded. And now the red blood cells can get in and out of the capillaries, oxygenate the tissue because they're not stuck together. They go in single file and do their magic and take the oxygen in, take whatever out. And so it's a beautiful, elegant system. So animals in nature, they don't have thick blood. Um, and, and it's just uh, that that is the phenomena that was the discovery that was that is the mechanism of action, because now if you have a pocket of inflammation, the blood can go in there mm -hmm. and it can give up electrons all the way. I mean, if it if it can still function at five, it, it can give up, you know, a third of its electrons to reduce that inflammation and go back through another cycle of in the system, which only takes a minute or two, and it keeps keep, keeps the electrons flowing, the free electrons flowing. And when we're plugged in, there's an endless supply. Yes, yeah, it's an endless supply. The Earth, I mean, the Earth is infinitely large, and there's an you know, and we're infinitely small comparatively speaking. But there's always a um, there's a reservoir out there that is infinite. Thank you. So let's let's switch gear from here. And let's talk okay. about children and going on barefoot and what's going on with our kids today. Well, that's a, um, you can look at the baby study, for instance, and we do have a lot of anecdotal information from um, ADD, ADHD, a lot of these um, anxiety, high anxiety uh, issues. Mm -hmm. And, but to me, it's very simple. It's, it's like, um, you know, it's children. You know, when I was, when we were children, or when I was a child, I'm 75. 
Uh, so when I was a child, I mean, shoes were something you, you wore to school, to church, to weddings, uh, special events. Um, but, but even to school, we were barefoots when I was a kid. We actually went to school barefoot. And um, <clears throat> we were always healthy. There was no such thing. I mean, you had your infectious diseases, you know, like um, the flus and the colds and things of that nature. And you did have the, you know, the uh, mumps and the measles and all of these things. They would all come and go. But we survived. And today, if you it's like um, a lot of people say, well, it's, you know, from the reason our children are sick is because of the food. It's because of EMS, because of all these different things. And there's no one single thing that is the cause of all of this. But the <clears throat> the thing that the kids are just not healthy today, period. I mean, 40 percent of them could be diagnosed as on some stage of diabetes or somewhere on. There. Uh, and when I started um, the research on this, um, Autism was like one in 10,000. That was 20 years ago or whatever it was. I don't remember exactly. But then it went down to one in 5,000. Then it went down to one in 1,000. Then one in 500. Now it's one in 50. And this is just in a period of 10, 20 years. And so is this an environmental health disorder? Uh, I think it is. Uh, meaning something in our environment is stressing the immune system sufficient that the body can't maintain proper health in our children. And so the first thing I do is look to the shoes. If you take a child who is, uh, I don't care whether they have autism, I mean, if it's mild autism or whatever the issues are, you take them outdoors, take their shoes off, they turn into different people. Their color comes up, their energy comes up. Uh, they're, if they're sick, you put them outdoors in the sunshine and put them on the grass for a while. All of a sudden, they start to get well. Yeah, all of our children, they don't. I mean, it's like um, daylight. How many kids? I mean, we live in, in homes. We don't get any sunlight anymore. They don't have any vitamin D. They have to supplement vitamin D, <laughs> you know, and so on. It's, so it's all a sea of craziness. And, and it's a sea of disconnect. I go back to my childhood, and I'm going to bring it kind of full circle here to the, to the body electric, which is I would get in trouble. I was, I was the quintessential ADHD, I'll put that in quotes, kid. Before uh -huh. there was ADHD, it was hyperactivity is what they called right. it. But I was trying to get myself grounded. I kept on going on play over in the sandbox and would uh -huh. put water in the sandbox to yes. try to make soil because something inside of me felt good about about getting my hands in the soil. What was yes. going on? Yes. Well, that's because you're short of electrons and your nervous system and your sympathetic, I mean, your sympathetic, your sympathetic overdrive, um, anxiety, irritability, um, and all the, the related issues there. And then eventually the immune system becomes so compromised that it can't fight off the normal day-to-day -day, uh, assaults from pathogens and viruses and so on. And I knew that getting my hands in, in fact, there's, there's, it's in the documentary, what does the group kiss the ground? Yes, yes. In fact, there's even a clip from some of those folks in the Earthing movie. And, you know, it's the soil, in the soil, I mean, if you take a microscope and look at the soil, I mean, there's a whole universe of life there that is just absolutely stunningly phenomenal. And so the health of our soil is, you know, to maintain those, that bacteria that um, uh, <clears throat> keeps the soil, uh, the, the process, processes the soil, keeps it alive. The soil is alive. And um, <clears throat> if you grow things like in live soil from, I'm talking about not our manufactured pesticide, artificial fertilized soil today, but everything's sweeter. It's different. It's better it's more nutritious because that's what you're eating is nutrition mm. and so there's this systematic thing between us and the soil and the plants that we eat and the air that we breathe and it's all connected it's all one thing so uh, yeah the soil is much more significant than any of us can even recognize because we've lost touch with it the smell of soil you know affects us the everything about soil affects us
Jessica and I, when we lived on Maui, we used to go to a biodynamic farm where the farmer says, we're not growing crops, we're raising soil. And we yes. would go barefoot walk around the farm. Occasionally you get a, a, a start, sharp sticker in you from something, something rogue in there, but it would still feel so good to be connected to good, healthy soil. And our, our, our uh, skin and gut bacteria are basically the same thing inside out. And touching yeah. that soil was literally boosting our immune systems. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, a, it's a unbelievable. I mean, you've got to get in the dirt. You've got to spend time in the dirt. You've got to touch live plants. You, you have to be a part of this. You have to connect to it because it's a balance. And when it gets out of balance, it's like, I, I hate to say things like this, but when I was young, very young, I remember I was, we were deer hunting one time and, and my grandfather, I was getting ready to wash my under my arms because I was sweating and whatever. And he knocked the soap out of underneath my arms. And he said, no, just don't ever wash under your arms. You know, don't ever use soap to wash under your arms. And I thought he was nuts. <laughs> and other you know and so on and but to this day i've never used deodorant and i don't have this body odor that most people have that so when you when you do things i mean everything in your body has pockets of, and different types of bacteria on your face on your every all your skin there's just un, untold amounts of different uh, families of bacteria that live on you but they keep you healthy they keep you alive and and, and yeah, I, I can't tell people how much, how important it is. Like when we were kids, we went barefoot out in the pasture. I mean, if we hurt ourselves stuck on a thistle or something, we'd go put our foot in a cow pie because the, they were sanitary. I mean, it was, uh, I hate, I, how do I say that? Oh, it they're dirt making machines. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, but that's what my dad told us to do. Just go put your foot in the cow pie and it'll take care of it. And there are people listening right now who are completely aghast. However, I, I'm sure there's the science to back this up. I've seen it anecdotally, which is when we have a hyper clean house where we're going after it with Lysol or disinfectants or antibacterial. That's where you find a, a, a large amount of, um, and forgive me folks that I don't have the science to back this up, but I, I've, I've seen this. You have a large amount of immune system going out of order because the person's microbiome is now out right. of order by, um, there's even a term for it, hygiene something. I'm not going to come up with it right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's it's kind of hard to get your mind around it because we've all been sold, you know. I mean, cleanliness is important. Yeah, and hygiene is absolutely critical in order to maintain health. But if you look at the indigenous cultures, they don't use. I mean, hygiene is 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 uh, it's, it's primal. I mean, we have our self cleaning systems and it's the bacteria on our bodies to a lot of degree in our mouths in our gut and um but <clears throat> you take all of i think the reason that so many of our children are their health is compromised because their immune system is compromised because you know the, the way i i've always looked at it and i can tell another story i don't want to be my stories are a little crazy sometimes but I remember when i was very young yeah. My dad or granddad took me out in the pasture and he put me on a horse and he said, okay, now you're a cowboy. And here's what cowboys do. They sit on a horse all day, boring as can be, and you're sitting there watching the animals. You're looking for a cow that is not acting normal. I mean, glassy eyed or she's bawling or something or something wrong. And so then as soon as that happens, you take that animal and you take them out of the herd and you put them in a pen. And then you have to go ride the pasture and see if there's any noxious weeds in the pasture. Go test the water, make sure that the water's, the pH is okay. Go right upstream, make sure there's not a dead animal upstream. But the point of it is there's something wrong in the pasture. Otherwise, that cow wouldn't have gotten sick. And there always is something wrong. So the concept is um, if you don't maintain a pristine pasture, meaning natural, native, yes. then the cows are going to get sick. You have to call the vet. You have to call the banker at the same time and then toss them the keys and say, we're out of here because you guys own it. There's no way you can make a living if you if your cattle get sick. And so but that's kind of the way I look at a lot of this. I mean, we need to look at our kids. We need to look at our food. We need to be eating real food. We need to be drinking real water, not bottled water. Uh, we need to, I'm, I'm not, I don't have the answers for all these stuff, but I know that we, we have to find our place in nature and fit ourselves back in. If we want the creature comforts, then y y you have to have 
shoes make them grounded or you know things like that you have to bring make nature a part of who you are but we have to get our sunlight back we have to get our ground back we have to get our fresh air back Excellent. And and I couldn't agree more. And for myself, even when I was living just outside New York City, I would go midday for lunch and go sit almost even in the winter and put my feet on the earth. I would be sitting on the front yeah. stoop <laughs> of the home and I would know people would look at me as if I'm crazy, but I knew I was recharging. In fact, let's do that. I'm, I'm going to see if we have time to go into mental health, but but I want to give the basics to people. So if people are going to get grounded, where do we begin? Well, the simplest way, and what I'd like to encourage people to do, because this all sounds absurd, and in many cases, the best thing to do is just go to the park, take stock of your feeling, how you feel, mentally, physically, your pain, whatever, and then just take your shoes off, your hands off, sit on the earth, put your hand, feet on the earth, and stay there for 30 minutes. Uh, dampen the soil a little bit if it's in your backyard. Even if you can't do anything else, you know, just get grounded and experience it. And then 30 minutes later, if it had any impact at all, then you need to do it again. <laughs> and you need to, but that's, you know, it's like a lot of people. The younger you are, you don't have the chronic health disorders, but the older you are, like once you get into your 35, 50, up to 55 and so on, uh, it's a real issue here. And <clears throat> so, but what I try to tell people is, Figure out, first of all, come to terms with it. There's something here. The earth is alive. It's energetic. Your body's alive, energetic, and, and they're connected. When you connect the two of them, then it normalizes vagal tone. We see that in the preemies. That's not a placebo effect. That's real. Um, <clears throat> so this is what's happening to you when you go outdoors. So it's really it's normalizing. It's taking the charge off your blood. Your blood can circulate now, and it can everything can go to work, and it can put out the fires and inflammation, and restore the autonomic nervous system, and and and, and uh, restore the immune the immune system. Because what I say, you know, if you have any kind of health disorder, I don't care what it is, then health is your most natural state. Look at nature. The animals who live in the wild. They don't have cancer. They don't have these modern health disorders. They don't have cardiovascular disease, lupus, CMS, and so on. Animals who live indoors with their owners, they all manifest the same health disorders as their owners. And so we know now that it's environment because it doesn't occur in nature. So, <clears throat> but the, so if you have a health disorder, if your health is compromised, then something is compromising your immune system because your immune system is what keeps you alive and healthy. So, you have to find out what's affecting your immune system, what's interfering with your immune system's ability to maintain health and start removing those things or adding those things that the immune system needs. So it's removing stress, stressors, stress, whatever, and adding nutrition, quietness, calmness, whatever those things are. Um, but anyhow, to get grounded, you know, the so many people, um, everybody has to do, uh, this is the big challenge I came across when, when we began studying this was what can we do for people that will help them more than any other? What is the single most important thing we can do? And so you, you can't change people's habits. It's not going to happen. Uh, and especially if they're older. So what you can do is, uh, if we can give something to lay on or put it under their sheet, they don't have to do it. They only have to do it one time. They don't have to mess with it every day, whatever, put it under their feet. You know, put it under their keyboard so they don't have to do anything except touch it or lay down and go to sleep yeah. or sit and do what they normally do. So that's the way I approached all of this, because a lot of people don't have time to go outdoors. If you can get outdoors, you need to get outdoors. You must get your kids outdoors these days. You must get your kids back into nature. Uh, they have these forest walks, this, uh, you know, everybody getting back into the forest and feel the forest it's alive it's energetic it talks to you it tells you i mean uh, all these things and so <clears throat> but anyhow these tools we can we've come given a few tools i mean once you experience grounding once you understand it and make sense of it then you know there's things you can buy for 59 dollars that are life-changing there's nothing that's more important than grounding your body uh, we spent 20 years doing the research, 24, 25 peer-reviewed studies. We have invested probably $20 million in the research and so on. We didn't do that because we had an ego and we wanted to go prove something. This is essential. This is something that has to be. 
So, so I want to talk about a few of the tools that we can use because like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I am always plugged in via this mat here above my keyboard. In fact, it used to be in our last home that I would actually wear these anklets and connect straight into my ground of my electrical outlet. And now I'm actually going to go back to that, Clint, because I, sure. I, you know, we've, got, we've got cell phones around, we've got Wi-Fi around, I've got a, a supercomputer to be able to handle the show and the recording and everything of this. Right. Since we're all switching swimming in a sea of EMF, what are a few, like, what is a grounding mat? What is it doing? Or what is a grounding sheet? And what is it doing? And, and uh, how does that work? Okay. It's really simple. It's like your refrigerator it has a metal housing and it's connected to the electrical ground mm -hmm. that goes into your electrical ground outlet. So Many the third prong. Yeah, many of the devices in your environment, your computers and all that kind of stuff that are sitting there, they're all grounded. They're not doing anything to you. They're grounded, they're shielded. You have an LED screen or you have a uh, liquid crystal, whatever screen. You don't have the old Carthade, Carthode ray tubes shooting blasting electrons. Blasting you. <laughs> yeah, blasting you. So your your environment is probably more is safer than you realize. If you have an ungrounded laptop mm -hmm. and you're charging it, and it's not grounded. I mean, the port isn't grounded. Those are problematic. Um, so, but anyhow, so what's happening is the the reason you ground that computer is you want to shield it, the the workings, the internal workings of the computer from getting to the into the environment, and you want to protect it from environment uh, environmental electric fields getting into the motherboards and all that kind of stuff and so on. So everything is shielded and refrigerator shielded because the motors move and if they ever get an electrical short, you want to be able to blow a breaker so the chassis will do that and protect you. Um, <clears throat> so it's the mats that we have, the sleep products that we have. Uh, it's for instance, uh, I mean, they're, they, 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 may, they have carbon. They're, they're made of carbon. They have a lot of carbon in them. Carbon is a metal, it's a conductive. And so <clears throat> it's like metal on the refrigerator or anything else. Uh, spark plug wires are made of carbon. Various wires are made of carbon. We're made of carbon. We're, we're primarily carbon. So anyhow, the, so what we do is we put a ground rod in the earth, whether it's the house ground or the rod that's already there and it's connected to your electrical ground. Uh, or whether you stick a ground, if you don't have one, you stick a ground rod in the ground and you bring a wire into the home. And so you have a source of so what you've done is you plugged into the earth there. Now you take a, uh, a sleep mat or a grounding mat or a grounded computer, or whatever, and you plug it into the electrical ground and it is now connected to the earth. And so the earth's electrical potential energy will come up that wire and energize and hold that anything that's connected to it at earth potential, meaning it has the same amount of electrons per square as the earth does itself. So now you, as a person, you will lay on one of these products or you touch cold water pipe, whatever, it doesn't matter because they're grounded. And <clears throat> so you lay on it and then your body becomes negatively charged. The mat is negatively charged. Mm -hmm. You lay on it, your body becomes negatively charged. So you're now in the umbrella, the electrical umbrella of Earth's electric field, and you are protected, you are shielded. So now your body can absorb electrons, release electrons. It can, the electric fields in the environment, especially the low frequency, are bounced off. You, they, don't affect, they don't affect your body. Um, the high frequency, uh, it's, there's lots of debate out there. Um, and there's just lots of debate, lots of issues and so on. The number one thing you can do is get grounded and hold your body at earth potential because at least you have free electrons in your body readily available to help your immune system, support your immune system as it does clean up any of the damages and problems that occur from day-to-day -day life. Excellent. So on that note, where can people go to find out more, to find your beautiful book, to find the documentary <laughs> and and to find products where we can get grounded. Well, you have um, we, we've come up with you know we, we, earthing.com we've we forever uh, that's a research and development company so we're forever researching and developing the product and so in order to get the products out we put together this one family of products called ground therapy mm -hmm. and and they're the new family of carbon products 
And so at groundtherapy.com, I think you have a link to that. I'm, I, I, I hope that you can share with the people. Yeah, I can put that link up on, on uh, I believe we can put it up here on YouTube and we'll put it up on our website for people to get to, to be able to get to the products. Yeah, I think that's the, the best because they have the, for what we have right now, those are the products that are going to serve people the best. They have the best pricing. They have the best, I mean, they're, they're going to last forever. The early ones that we came out with, the, the silver and cotton, they just didn't hold up. And so we, it took years of evolution to get through that process. And so we ended up going this route for the time being because it is the best that we can give. It's going to produce, I mean, to me, the outcome, what's going to give, what's going to serve the consumer the best, um, the function, I mean, it, you know, it's going to ground them. That's what number one. Number two, what can they afford and, and that will last the carbon? So it's a process of um, those two factors. So, but anyhow, uh, the, the best thing to do is go there, check them out. Yeah. Uh, and you, I, I think when you buy, that they have that one kit that I really encourage people. It's called a uh, ground therapy kit. Okay. It's a little red bag. It's got some patches in it, cord. And I, the, what I love about it, it's got the book in it, the movie, all those things in it. And <clears throat> what it does is it allows patches. you to, yeah. Cord. I, I am. Yes, I seem like I am pimping this stuff, but I live this world. I cannot... I, I cannot recommend it enough because I know how much of a difference it makes. I mean, my whole story, coming back from my first near-death experience, I was a broken, broken, inflamed guy who could barely walk anymore until I got my feet connected to the earth. Yeah. Yeah, so that particular product, the thing I love about it most of all is you can experience grounding. You can, If you have a chronic pain anywhere, you can put it right on the pain. Uh, or if you want to, grandma's got pain, you want to, she's not going to put up with you know, the maths and all the stories, she just wants to, to know if it works. You can put a patch on grandma and the pain goes away. She says, I want more of that. <laughs> so that's how you start. It's an educational thing for the family. And, um, and the, you know, their sleep mats, um, they're, they're essential. I mean, they're, they're relatively inexpensive and they, they'll last at least five years or more each. If you take care of them, they'll last forever. And um, <clears throat> they are what they are. I mean, these are going to help you restore your body's most natural electrical state and so that your immune system is electrical so it can function in the way it was designed in nature we were always grounded in nature when we disconnected from nature we lost our connection and now our bodies are on fire how important would you say as we wrap things up here would it be if we have the opportunity to literally just kick ourselves outside and go barefoot or lay on the earth, lay on the grass for a little while a day? Oh, that's absolutely essential. Uh, you know, it's it's like you say, it's not just the ground. I mean, what we're doing, we wouldn't put out the fire electrically, you know, the, because if you have inflammation, you have an electrical fire in your body. If you have any pain in your body whatsoever, you have inflammation and you have a fire a slow burning fire that's going to eventually oxidize and it's going to eat you up. Now going outdoors and laying on the earth. Now we're talking about a whole bunch of things. One, we're talking about vitamin D. We're talking about all of the bacteria, all of the bugs, all of the, you know, there's these frequencies. There's just, you know, the trees have, they're resonating with the earth. You're, you're in, I mean, it's a, it's a song. It's a dance. It's, it's, I, I, I mean, I can't tell you enough. I don't know the words to get it out. What if, what if we go, here's the closest that I can come up with. A baby being soothed by being placed near their mama's heart and being able to hear the heartbeat. Us going to the earth as the baby being soothed by mama's heartbeat as well. Right. What we learned from the cortisol study was... <clears throat> In the early days, we had three three participants who were student. I mean, uh, stewardesses, mm -hmm. and they were based in New York, but they spent a lot of time in San Diego, so they had time, so they would participate in our study. The problem was that their cortisol was three hours off because of, we didn't couldn't put this together. So then we figured out that jet lag is because of cortisol being up, because your cortisol is elevated when you should be trying to sleep. So what we found was, though, as soon as you get off the plane and you ground your, take your bare feet, put your bare feet on the earth, then it resets your biological, your internal biological clocks and resyncs up your cortisol with the Earth's electric, the amplitude of Earth's electric field. It's powerful information. 
And um, but the, the truth, I mean, the Earth has it's it's alive. It has it's resonating frequencies. It has the 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 increase and decrease in amplitude depending on time of day. Schumann's resonance. Yes, and so it's related to lightning, to the sun. It's related to the internal activity of the core of the Earth and all of the planets. I mean, the moon. Uh, I mean, the tide is going back and forth with the moon. That's what creates part of the noise and part of the Schumann resonance. It's all connected. We are a part of that, and when we get back into that, it sinks up our 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 systems, and then our body can function as it knows how, knows what it. That's who our body is. I mean, it's who we are. So, thanks. I'm going tomorrow to to uh, Merida, Merida, Mexico, to the uh, Nobel laureates, uh, Nobel Peace Laureates Summit, Nobel Prize winners from around the world uh, uh -huh. coming together to talk about peace. And I know when I get off of that plane, um, right. I used to do it in the airport and you could actually ground on the electrical on the uh, metal uh, conveyor belts. Sure. I, I probably will wait till I get outside. I'm not quite <laughs> as wacky as I used to be in my younger days. I was kind of zealous then about being barefoot everywhere. But I know the first thing I want to do when I get to the get outside of that airport is connect to the earth and everything. It's like switching channels to a new time zone and everything drains away. The inflammation that's been gathered up on that airplane starts to drain right out of me. Yeah. You know, you use the word peace. And one of the things that I have learned about <clears throat> grounding is, and you mentioned your uh, pet, I mean, your, your dog, we've grounded a lot of people through hospice and things like that. And we don't ground them in order to do anything other than to quiet their nervous system, to quiet and, and bring them back into compliance or in to sync with the earth and the frequencies of the earth. And there's a calming thing. There's a, they, they, they're at peace when they're grounded like you were discussing about your dog. But the other is true about the children. When we grounded the babies, they were, they came to peace. They were, you know, they were before they were, you know, wild in the um, fight or flight. And then as soon as we ground them, they, they calmed down. So whether it's our babies, our children, uh, and if we could get our leaders outdoors and barefoot on the earth, do you think they're going to sit there and fight with each other? No, they're going to loosen up. They're going to relax. They're going to sit around a campfire, everybody, grab some marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, because everybody's so stressed up. I mean, because of the anxiety, irritability, the pain, and the frustration, and they don't even know what it is. They're so used to it. But when they get grounded, I mean, it, ground, the word ground means return to normal in electrical terms to maintain normal. <laughs> And that's what we're missing. When when I work with somebody, I do I do extensive coaching. I even do a lot of coaching with leaders. And when they are carrying a charge, is how I used to describe it. I say that when they're carrying a charge, they are spun. And spun, yes. we all know this feeling, is disconnected from the earth. If right. I can then get them to plug back in, all of these words are very specific for a reason, they become right. grounded, they discharge. Yes. And they can think more clearly. Right. They're, they're, yeah, they go back to normal. <laughs> Woohoo! Nature this, intended. This has been phenomenal, uh, Clint. I can't recommend your book. I can't recommend the documentary. I certainly can't recommend getting grounded with whatever product or habit you choose to put into your life. Are there any last words you want to share with people today? Well, the main thing is I think they've given you a link to the Earthing movie. Yes. Uh, and and <clears throat> I think, you know, the reason we made that movie was because it serves moms and so many people who have all of these autoimmune diseases and the, and we speak to the children in the schools and so on. And we have a uh, high profile group of people, uh, every everybody from a 30 year FDA veteran to uh, you name it. <laughs> and they're all. Um, on board and saying so, but the real key here is this movie. If you can find the time to watch it, uh, at least watch the last half of it. Uh, it's life changing for uh, your friends and family, and and it needs to go where people need it. It was made for the people who need to understand. Uh, it's a wake up call. And and for me, I I think it's 
you know, I, I want to help us. I want to feel better. I want you to feel better. I want everybody to feel better. But it's about the kids. Yeah, it's really about the kids. I mean, it doesn't mean the older people, you, you can, they, 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 you can't do much. It's like the, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But the kids, I mean, the next generation, you've got to fix this autism. We've got to fix this diabetes. It's, it's, we've got to fix our food. We have to fix our, our schools. We have to, these kids have to be outdoors. I mean, we are creatures, you know, of the planet and of the sun. We need that energy. And we need to find some way to use these new devices um, intelligently. You know, it's like wear shoes on purpose. Use your own computer on purpose. Use your cell phone on purpose. Don't live on it. You know? I could so, agree more. That's all I have to say today. Well, if you ever have questions, give me a holler. <laughs> Clint, I am so happy and honored to have you on the show. I am so happy and honored. You are on a mission. You've been on a mission. Full disclosure, you know, I wrote about earthing in barefoot running over a decade ago. My wife and I yeah. did. Um, right. and, and, and there wasn't that much science at the time. We got slayed in the Amazon reviews. You can't trust anything in this book because it has earthing in it. Well, now right. the science is there, which is right. so cool. And you're so you're still at it because it is so important. There is no one yes. magic bullet. But right. if we look at what's missing today, this one's huge. Yes. Yeah, and it's free. <laughs> Woohoo! So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, be well, have fun, begin plugging back into the earth and getting grounded to the natural world today. And Thanks, Mike. shine bright. Woohoo! Thank you Thanks. so much, Clint. Yeah, thank you. Um, I knew that you would end up being an advocate here. <laughs> here you are. And that's all great. And uh, that's what it's all about. So anything I can do to help out, all you got to do is holler. I just had the most remarkable interview with Clint Ober on the benefits of earthing and grounding. To check out more amazing videos on boosting your health, click here, subscribe below.